We will now discuss briefly uh, how to analyze resistors in series and resistors in parallel. This is important um, in general for analyzing circuits with resistors in it, but this is also something that will prove important later on uh, in this module when we discuss impedance. Um, so when we discuss impedance, what we learn here about resistors in series and in parallel will be helpful for analyzing uh, inductors in series in parallel and capacitors in series in parallel also. Looking at this simple circuit of three resistors in series, in essence we want to replace them by a single equivalent resistance. So we want to simplify our circuit by replacing these three resistors by a single resistor or a single equivalent resistor. Looking or recalling what voltage is, um, the voltage across each resistor, so the, the voltage across the first resistor is E1, across the second resistor is E2, and across the third resistor is E3. And the current through all three resistors is the same because, in essence, the electrons have only a single path to go through. And since charge is conserved, however much current is flowing through the first resistor must also flow through the subsequent resistors. And since voltage is a potential difference, um, the total voltage difference across all three resistors is just the sum of the voltages across the individual resistors. You know, if there's three voltages, three volts across the first resistor, two across the second, and one across the third, then the total potential is just going to be the sum of those potential differences. Applying Ohm's law to each, each resistor individually, recall that voltage across the resistor is equal to current through the resistor times the resistance, where, again, all three resistors have the same current, I. So E1 is equal to I times R1, E2 is equal to I times R2, and E3 is equal to I times R3. The fact that the currents are all equal means that we can factor them out and then we can represent this equivalent resistance as the voltage across all three resistors divided by the current through all three resistors. So using this Ohm's law again we can divide this I to the left hand side and we get that the equivalent resistance is E divided by I, which is equal to the resistances summed together. So in summary, the equivalent resistance of resistors in series is just the sum of the individual resistances. Now we will discuss resistors in parallel. Since voltage is a potential difference in all three resistors, are connected together um, at the same node on the left hand side and the same node on the right hand side, the potential differences across all three resistors is equal and we will define that to be E. The current through the individual resistors however can be different. So you can sort of imagine you know, that we have electrons flowing through here and each of the electrons can choose a different path. So some of the electrons will flow through the first resistor, some of the electrons will flow through the second resistor, and some of the electrons will flow through the third resistor. Looking at, at trying to quantify how much current is flowing through each resistor, we can a, again use Ohm's law. Using the fact that that current is conserved, you know, however much current is flowing into this node will equal however much current is flowing out of it, the current in is going to equal I1 plus I2 plus I3. Using Ohm's law, each of those currents is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the corresponding resistance. And intuitively, you, know, you can think of this as, as the current wanting to take the path of least resistance. So the less, the smaller the resistance, the more current is going to flow through that path. Since each of those voltages are equal, we can factor that out front and then again 
capturing this as an equivalent resistance. Um, resistance is voltage divided by current. So we can divide I to the right hand side and then we can take this sum of resistances divide it to the left hand side and we get that the equivalent resistance is equal to this final expression. We can also do a little bit of mathematical manipulation and it can be shown that this is also equal to to the ratio R1 times I, R2 times R3 divided by R2 times R3 plus R1 times R3 plus R1 times R2. Again, representing or understanding um, how to reduce resistors in series and resistors in parallel will be helpful um, when we discuss uh, impedances later in this module. At this point we will now introduce some laws for deriving the, the differential equations for electrical circuits from first principles. And so much in the same way that we did with mechanical systems where we applied Newton's laws, here we will apply Kirchhoff's laws. The first law that we will learn is called Kirchhoff's current law or Kirchhoff are also called the node law. And what it says is that current into a node is, cur is conserved. So if we're considering a node in our circuit, uh, this node does not accumulate any charge. Whatever current is flowing in must exactly equal the amount of current flowing out. And so mathematically we could say it is this way. Uh, I, I1 plus I3, the current into the node, is equal to I2 plus I4 plus I5, the current out of the node. And this is a notion that we've, that we've already sort of talked about a little bit. The second law that we'll use is called Kirchhoff's voltage law, or the loop law. And what it says is that voltages around a loop must, must sum to zero. And this makes intuitive sense, because voltage is a potential difference. So if we're at the same place in a circuit, then we must have the same voltage or the same potential. For example, if we start at this point in our circuit and we move around the circuit where we're assuming that that current flows in this direction, i.e. current flows clockwise around the circuit, if we define this to be our ground, or to be zero volts, um, as we go across this symbol here, um, this is a voltage source or a battery. And so this, uh, this causes a jump in voltage of, of E volts. As we continue around the circuit, um, when we go across the resistor, we will drop voltage uh, according to Ohm's law. And so you know, if this is the positive side and that's the negative side, we'll have a voltage drop of IR. Then we continue. The voltage that drops across the inductor is proportional to the rate of change of the current. So the drop in voltage will be equal to L times di dt. And then finally, we go across the capacitor. And so the drop across that capacitor is proportional to 1 over C and the integral of the current or the amount of charge that's accumulated in the capacitor. At this point we're back to where we started and so the total change in voltage should be zero. Um, if we were to write this as an equation it would look like this. So as we go across we have an increase in voltage of E, then we drop across the resistor, then we drop across the inductor, and then we drop across the capacitor, and the total sum should be zero since we're back to where we began.